Welcome to The Big Picture. I'm Phil Arno. Well, this week we finally got our wish. The midterms are over. No more political ads, no more robocalls. All those signs sitting on front lawns are thankfully blowing away. Life will slowly return to just complaining about the Buffalo Bills. And here comes the snow. But for purposes of this show, I'm going to have to subject you to one more, hopefully not too painful, discussion of the election and how it might affect us in the immediate future. With me to partake in this torture is political consultant Carl Calabrese of Massiello, Martucci, Calabrese and Associates. Welcome, Carl. Uh, I think I can sum this up in two statements. Nationally, half a loaf is better than none, and in New York State, Will the last Republican turn out the lights before you leave town? <laughs> yeah. I, I just want to give you some bad news, though. <laughs> you think life is going back to normal? No. We're about to kick off the 2020 presidential race. Okay? God help us. <laughs> yes. So any of your, your viewers and listeners who think, oh, I'm going to get a reprieve from politics for the next year, wrong. The, the, uh, the jockeying will start on the Democrat side for that nomination in 2020, believe me. Well, don't, don't turn off your TV sets. Just tune to WBBZ <laughs> and you'll be free of all those political ads. <laughs> um, okay, the election. Uh, first, let's talk about New York State. Uh, New York State is now a blue state through and through. We are now a one-party state. Uh, the governor, the legislature, the se state senate, all controlled by one party, and how is that going to affect us? Yeah, and, and just to add to that, one party primarily centered in downstate New York City area. Right. Uh, that's a problem because uh, as much as we have partisan divides in the state, we have regional divides, upstate versus downstate. And so um, that's a real concern to a lot of people and a lot of groups and organizations uh, in western New York and upstate that you're going to have all the power now centered uh, in New York City. And the last time that happened, it wasn't very pretty. Uh, we're only going to have one state senator who will be in the majority west of Utica, and that's Tim Kennedy. Now, Tim is a very strong advocate for Western New York, uh, but he's going to be dealing with a lot of people from New York City that want to bring home lots of bacon to their district. So it's going to be quite a struggle. Well, you know, in the past, we've, we've heard of a lot of zany stuff coming out of New York City being suggested, laws that just make no sense whatsoever. And there's always been a filter on that. There's always been some sanity that's kind of you know, maintained a little bit of, uh, you know, a, a hold on some of the stuff that's kind of crazier. Now there's really, uh, is there going to be any kind of a, of a you know, yeah. a cork to keep all that stuff in the well, bottle? You're referring to the Republican Senate that, that indeed did take a lot of the far left legislation that came out of the assembly and bottled it up in committee. It just never saw the light of day. That That is gone now. That cork is gone. Uh, the only possible restraints may be within the Democratic caucus, and time will tell. You've got, a, you've got a lot of folks from downstate elected who are far left progressive. But then you've got uh, a number who were elected from more moderate suburban upstate areas. All right? uh, there's going to be a real real struggle, a real tug of war there as to which way the Democrat Party goes in the state. Um, can they, the, the newcomers, who understand that a lot of the stuff won't sell in their more moderate districts and might cost them their seat in two years, do they go along with it? Do they try to modify it? Or are they not successful at all? That's worth watching. That's going to be a really interesting internal fight. Um, I think that the energy on, on the, in the Democrat Party is coming from the progressive wing. Uh, it has been coming. That's nationwide, certainly true in New York. So I think uh, if you had to place a wager down today as to what side would prevail, right now I would say it would be the progressive left. Well, it, we're kind of in uncharted territory because the, the state Senate has been controlled by Republicans almost for the entire time since almost the 1930s. There was one exception, I think, in like 2010, and that really didn't end well for the Democrats. They were in charge, and it, it, it kind of turned a little chaotic then. It, it, was, it was a mess, and it didn't end well for the Democrats. Is that 
going to, is, is that going to be a lesson for them? Is that going to temper how they behave, do you think? Well, you would think it would, and they have said it, it would, that they learned from that, that uh, that was a mess, that was chaotic. Uh, a number of the leadership of the Democratic Party went to jail over issues. Um, there was a lot of clawing back of funds from all over the state for New York City. Uh, they say that they learned from that and they're not going to do it. Actions speak louder than words, we'll wait and see. It, how, how similar circumstances were there back then with now in terms of the governor and the and the legislature and the mood at the time was it comparable to what it is today? Oh, I, I think today um, you've got even stronger demographics for the Democrats in the state. They, their enrollment advantage has only grown since 2008. Um, you've got a, a, a governor that obviously now is going to his, his third term. Uh, and uh, the, I would say the other difference is uh, the mood has changed. As I say, I think the progressive left wing of the Democrat Party has really emerged as the driving force within that party, again, statewide and nationwide. Well, it's, it's not, not a good sign if you're conservative or Republican in the state. Um, I mean, the registered Republicans in the state are 23% of the voters. Um, it, it's, it's two to one, it's, it's almost 50% uh, are, are registered Democrats. Um, and it's getting worse because new registrations this, this last cycle was m like almost 10 to one uh, Democrats over Republicans. So it's getting worse in terms of, of uh, turning bluer uh, as we go forward. So I'm not sure what that's going to do. Our, our, I'm assuming if the state becomes a higher taxed state, uh, if people who own guns are, are you know, picked on and you know, legislation becomes more harsh, uh, more people are gonna be moving out of the state, which is going to turn into a vicious cycle. Uh, I, I just don't know where it's going to go. Yeah, the, the state Republican Party is, seems almost incapable of electing someone to state office. I can't remember the last time they elected someone to state office. Uh, you're losing more and more county executives and county legislatures. You're losing the voter enrollment battles. And the real problem is, going forward, is all of the Democrats who won last night are now incumbents. They're going to be running for re-election in the state Senate in 2020 as incumbents in a presidential year where you have a spike of 20 to 25 percent more Democrats who come out once every four years. If they retain the Senate in 2020, they will be at the table to draw the lines uh, of the new districts following the reapportionment from the 2020 census. If that happens, um, they will probably draw the Republican Party into minority status for at least a decade. Now, I know you have to work with these people, so I'm not sure if you're comfortable cons you know, uh, passing judgment, but is this a problem with the leadership of the Republican Party? Is it just a weak leadership that, that is you know, unable to uh, field the proper candidates, or is it just a, a problem with we just don't have enough people? I, I think it's a combination of all of those things and maybe a few, few other factors as well, Phil. Um, there's always this debate going on in the Republican Party is what should the party be in New York State? Should it be a form of Democrat light? a more moderate party, or should it run on conservative principles but aggressively advocate those principles and show how they're different? And that, that's, that's a battle that has yet to be resolved, and until it's resolved, it's, it's kind of this, this ship that goes in different directions depending what's, what part of the state you're in, and there's never that core message that people can identify that this is what the Democrats stand for and this is what the Republicans stand for. I think that's the, the major source of the problem. Well, you know, I was in, in California for a long time, and, and it, they have a similar situation in that their large population centers are very uh, blue, you know, Los Angeles and, and San Francisco. The rest of the state I isn't necessarily, you know, that uh, left-leaning but it just gets overpowered, just like we are overpowered downstate. You know. No question, I, I tell people all the time, as long as New York City is part of this state, we're kind of just a captive of that. And for every three of us up here, there's five of them down there. And so if they come out to vote, they drive the ship. And that is a, if, if you remove New York City, became its own state, we essentially, the rest of us, become Ohio. Buffalo is now the largest city 
agriculture is now the largest industry. It's a whole different political uh, demographic and political profile and political landscape, but it's not going to happen. But it certainly would be a, a major change. What, what is it about New York City or any large you know, a population center like New York City that makes it a left-leaning population center. I mean, I'm not sure exactly what that dynamic is. Yeah, I, uh, I don't know either other than it goes back to the, the earliest days of the Republic. Uh, the cities were always uh, more liberal. It's, it, they tend to attract uh, more immigrants and uh, you know you have the history of the political machines, the Democrat machines, and the Tammany Hall in New York City that uh, you know got control of the government apparatus. And so I think there's a lot of hist historical reasons for it, cultural reasons for it, economic reasons for it, uh, but it is what it is and, and that's the situation we in upstate New York find ourselves in. And how much do you think uh the governor now, who's going to have, you know, two par two other branches that are on his side. How much do you think he's going to uh, influence what happens in terms of his agenda in the state? Is he going to be, you know, basically free run in terms of what he wants done? Uh, maybe, maybe not. I mean, sometimes uh, having the whole ball of wax can be a detriment. Um, you know, it's like herding cats. Uh, I can remember a story about Lyndon Johnson who, when he was majority leader in the Senate and he had a majority of one. And in the next election, uh, Democrats did real well and he had a majority of like 14. And one of the reporters said, boy, life is going to be a lot easier for you now, isn't it, Senator? You've got this big majority. He says, oh, no, it's going to be much tougher. Said, what do you mean? He said, well, when I had one, a majority of one, there was party discipline. That one, if they left us, could destroy our whole agenda. And so we had that force, that bond, that you have to stay with the team. He so said, now that I've got 14 people, they're all free agents. They, they all think they can abandon the ship. He said, it's going to be much tougher now. So, <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, that's it for this segment. We're going to talk about the national picture when we come back. That's also a very interesting uh, uh, picture that's uh, going forward as you talk, as you said earlier, we're going to get into the uh, 2020 uh, race almost immediately. And so uh, it's going to be interesting. Stay tuned. We'll be right back after these messages.